What is going on people? Welcome to Rio's Positive POV. It is 2023 and I am buzzing for this year in film. But before that, I wanted to let you guys know my top 10 films from last year. So stick around and I'll break down my 10 favorite movies released in 2022. <music> Starting off my list at number 10, I have Happening. This film is directed by Audrey Dewan and is a French language film all about a young girl in high school who becomes pregnant and wants to get an abortion. The only problem is in France during those days, women weren't allowed to get abortions. They were being thrown in jail for it. Yes, insane, I know. Well, they're kind of doing that shit in America now at the moment, ain't they? This film resonated a lot with me. I found it moving. It was heartfelt. The story was magnificent, as was the lead performance and the supporting performances as well. Just a brilliant film from start to finish and definitely one which you should go check out. One of the best foreign language films of recent memory for me, for sure. Then at number nine, I have a film which is on pretty much everyone's top 10 list, it seems. Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, directed by The Daniels, starring Michelle Yeoh. This film is killing it across board. It's being nominated for so many awards. It is being brought to the forefront of social media a lot. And I really enjoyed this film from start to finish. The rock scene is probably my favourite scene. No, sorry, it's my second favourite scene of 2022. Michelle put on a magnificent performance behind only Kate Blanchett and Tar for me when it comes to lead performances in film. And it's going to be one of those films that is going to be remembered for many years. Kind of like how Parasite was when it came out in 2019. Kind of changed the game slightly. Number nine, everything, everywhere, all at once. At number eight, we have Robert Eggers' The Northman, which stars Alexander Skarsgård and Anya Taylor-Joy. Brilliant acting from every single person involved. Simply magnificent acting, if we're being honest. But for me, the best part of this film is the visuals. Jaron Blaschke is the cinematographer and has been on every single film Eggers has made. Those two need to continue making films together until the end of days. Visually unbelievable. Just such a good film to look at. I've gone back and watched it multiple times and it never fails to just make my eyes open so wide and just be full of admiration of how they shot that film. The symmetry, the angles, the landscape shots, Charion and Robert need to work together until the end of time. Talking visuals, Brings me on to number seven, which is, of course, James Cameron's The Way of Water. I'm not going to get too deep on this. I will link above my full review if you want to hear me gush about this film. What's to say? It's going to be the next film of James Cameron's to make over two billion. And it deserves it. It's a cinematic, visual masterpiece. And I'm not saying it's a masterpiece. It's the best film of all time. I'm just saying, when it comes to the visuals and the cinematic experience, oh, unbelievable, mate. Unbelievable. Coming in at number six, I have the Tilda Swinton-led Memoria. This is a film that initially was only ever going to see the light of day in cinemas. It was not going to have a physical release at all. I'm happy that they did release it on physical. However, I do understand why they wanted to have it only as a cinema film because it is the epitome of a cinema film. Visually striking, the visuals are beautiful from start to finish. Some of the landscape shots are just jaw-droppingly gorgeous. Then you have the performance of Tilda Swinton, which once again shows that she's one of the best actresses working today. But it's the sound design, which is the reason why it should be seen in a cinema, because the sound design is some of the best that I've heard ever. It's just that damn good, the sound design. And it plays such an important role in the story that it needs to be perfection. And perfection is what it is. Then at number five, I have Sarah Polly's Women Talking, a film which has a magnificent cast from top to bottom. 
The acting on show is some of the best I've seen in a long while from everyone involved. An ensemble that just goes from strength to strength. It's hard to pick a favourite performance. Right now, my head's still with Claire Foy, but tomorrow it could be a different actress and the next day a different one. Ben Winshaw is also brilliant in his performance as well. The script is probably my favourite script of 2022. It's just a brilliant, brilliant film. Hats off to Sarah Polly because the writing and directing, just unbelievable. Number five, Women Talking. Coming in at number four, I have Darren Aronofsky's The Well, a film that just completely broke me. I was in tears come the end of this. Brendan Fraser is the comeback king, a majestic performance from him. And if it wasn't for Colin Farrell in The Banshees of Inisherin, I think he'd be running away with that Oscar. Hong Chow and Sadie Sink, also magnificent. But for me, it's Samantha Morton once again. She pops up in a film for one scene and absolutely kills it. In She Said, she puts on my favourite performance of the year. And here it's close to exactly the same level. The scene with her and Fraser is top three scene of the year. What a film. Just an emotional wreck coming the end of that. And it was just so, so good to see Brenda Fraser back in an important role. Just so, so good to see. Then, number three, Jordan Peele's Nope. This is a film which I didn't love on first viewing. I enjoyed it. I thought the cinematography was a standout. I thought the script and story was slightly weak. And I thought that the jean jacket full reveal wasn't wasn't that great. I've now watched it six times. And every single time I've watched it, my appreciation has grown. I've watched behind the scenes documentaries. I've watched interviews with the filmmaker, the cast and, and Hoyt, the cinematographer. And my admiration for the film has just grown and grown and grown. So that's why Note for me is number three. The best horror movie of 2022 by a landslide and visually magnificent. You'll notice a trend here. I love visual spectacle movies and spectacle is a main theme in Nope. Number three? Nope. The runner up at number two, we have Top Gun Maverick, directed by Joseph Kaczynski and starring the last movie star, Tom Cruise. This film was pure electricity. Electric. Certain scenes had the hairs on my arm standing up. Favourite cinema experience of the year. And this film was number one on this list for pretty much the whole year since I seen the film. It was only in December when it got moved from that position. The scene where Maverick shows that the mission can be done and the last 20 minutes, wow, that shit right there was unbelievable. So, so good. There can only be one. There can only be one number one, and that goes to Charlotte Wells and her film After Sun. A film which after the first 20 minutes I just didn't like at all. But by the end, when the story unraveled and everything came to play, wow. Wow, wow, wow. What a debut film. The emotions that this film brought out of me is just insane. A film which I watched three days in a row in the cinema, I had to keep going back for more, even though it was emotionally defeated me every single time. The editing is up there for some of the best of the year. Paul Mescal is going to be an actor who you're going to hear about a lot in the coming years. Frankie Corio, also superb. Let's see what she does with her career. Charlotte Wells is now my favourite one and done, well, one and done? No, that's probably not the right term. Charlotte Wells is my favourite one film in the bank filmmaker. And I, for one, can't wait to see what she does next. And I can't wait to see what films we have in store for 2023. But for now, that's my top 10 of 2022. Thank you for listening. Peace out.